Throughout history, there have been individuals whose lives and identities remain shrouded in mystery. From enigmatic leaders to secretive artists, these mysterious figures continue to find a way to fascinate us to this day. Now, who were they and what makes them so mysterious? Join us as we uncover the stories of the most mysterious people to ever exist. What secrets will we uncover and what mysteries will be left unsolved? Up first is Wolf Messing. Little of Messing's life can be categorized as hard fact and even the details surrounding his birth are murky at best. Some sources say he was born in 1874, others say 1899. His birthplace seems a little more certain though, Gora Kawaria, which is a Jewish village situated near Warsaw, Poland. His mother is believed to have died when he was young, while his father, Chaim Messing, remarried and had two more children, but not much else is known about Wolf's early life. So the next chapter in the story is told by the first of many anecdotes that are attributed to his life. It is said that he basically left home at an early age, perhaps even running away, and caught a train to Berlin. So that is kind of where the story is going to pick up. The first signs of his special telepathic abilities were noted during this journey. Unable to afford a ticket, the young Messing had snuck onto the train and hidden under a seat in the hopes that the ticket inspector wouldn't end up seeing him. Ultimately, the plan failed, but the quick-thinking Messing grabbed an old piece of newspaper and tried his luck by handing it to the inspector and declaring it to be his ticket. You're an odd duck, you know? The inspector is believed to have said, why are you hiding when you have a ticket? At that moment, Messing realized that he had incredible powers of persuasion over people. And you can kind of already see where this is going to go. He's about to start finessing. Life in Berlin was tough for the young Messing, who scraped by as best as he could. Poor and malnourished, his health took a turn for the worse. However, a chance encounter at the doctor's office led him to a circus that would change his life forever. The Bush Circus gave Messing an opportunity to showcase his telepathic abilities, and it wasn't long before audiences were mesmerized by his act. Telepathic abilities, by the way. He'd apparently read the minds of those in attendance and then carry out simple tasks that they'd telepathically communicated to him. People's thoughts come to me as pictures, he once claimed. And me, uh, I'm not believing any of this, to be honest. Like, psychics, all that stuff, that's cool. I've watched enough, like, Chris Angel, Mind Freak, all that stuff to know that this is not it. But if it's for you, hey, no hate on that. To many, his act was more than trickery. It was genuine magic and clairvoyance. Messing later described his abilities as grounded in hard science. Yes, he said this. It's not mind reading, it's like reading of muscles. When humans think hard about something, the brain cells transmit impulses to all muscles of the body. Their movements, invisible to the eye, I can easily feel. This is all what Messing claimed, all right? Like, again, if you believe it, you believe it. A lot of the time, Messing held the person whose mind he was attempting to read, apparently detecting the subtle muscle movements they gave off as their brains ticked over. He claimed this gift worked both ways as he could broadcast mental suggestions to alter their perceptions of any intended target, hence the train conductor believing his scrap of paper was a ticket. I don't know. Messing traveled far and wide with the circus as it toured the globe. One stop in Vienna, Austria brought the young performer into contact with two of the greatest thinkers of the 20th century, Albert Einstein and Sigmund Freud, or as we're led believe. Basically, this has never been 100% confirmed. Again, a lot of the stuff of this guy's life is just like surrounded in mystery. So we're all taking this with a big grain of salt, just in case. I mean, the guy literally says he's telepathic. So, you know what I mean? Like, just think about that. Anyways, the encounter was said to have occurred in 1913 or 1915. However, it's generally accepted that Einstein and Freud didn't first meet each other until 1927. For the sake of a good story, let us throw the caution to the wind in and dump ourselves. Basically, we're just going to kind of go along with this just to finish out the story. But like I said, keep all this with a grain of salt. Legend states that Einstein and Freud were so captivated by Messing's abilities that they decided to test him. Freud gave a mental command to Messing, go to the bathroom cupboard and pick up some tweezers. Return to Albert Einstein, pull out from his luxuriant mustache three hairs, and Messing duly obliged, leaving Freud and Einstein basically just stunned you know what i mean they were they were amazed that this happened apparently like i said take all this with a grain of salt the truth is that they these two probably didn't even meet each other until 1927 and apparently this all happened in 1913 or 1915 so like i said i don't know take believe it if you want to but i'm taking this all as legend says you know during the course of his life, everyone who was anyone in the 20th century seemingly visited Messing. From Mahatma Gandhi to Marilyn Monroe, even Adolf Hitler was said to have been afraid of Messing's powers, placing a bounty on his head, uh, basically after he predicted in 1937 that if Hitler goes to war against the East, his death awaits him. So, 
dude, he had everybody coming up to meet him. He was like, you know, I mean, he even had Hitler scared of him, dude. Like, this is craziness, all right? Trust me, we're not done. The prediction apparently cost Messing his freedom as he was forced to flee and head eastwards. One tale speaks of capture by the Gestapo, but Messing was able to use his powers of persuasion to convince the guards to lock themselves up instead. Apparently, they duly handed him the keys and he made his escape. So, if you're keeping track, this guy has met Gandhi, Marilyn Monroe, um, Hitler is scared of him, and now he's pulling Jedi mind tricks on the Gestapo to lock themselves up instead of him. Like, dude, this guy is unbelievable in my eyes. Um, I don't know. If you think this is believable, hey, all power to you, brother. You know what I mean? I don't know. By the time Messing arrived in the Soviet Union, his legend was already well established. Joseph Stalin, who was basically the leader of the Soviet state at that time, got wind of Messing's arrival and ordered he be brought to him. The stories then tell of two challenges that Stalin set Messing to test the authenticity of his, of basically his telepathic powers, you know what I mean? The first was to come to Stalin's dacha, which was a country house, uninvited and get past security to reach the Soviet leader. Messing supposedly achieved this task without breaking a sweat, convincing Stalin's guards that he was none other than Leventry Beria, who was Stalin's secret police chief. So apparently he just finessed his way into this like country house uninvited that I don't I don't know, bro. Like this is insane. How far away did he have to be to learn this information out of his head to I don't know. I don't know, bro. This is breaking my brain at this point. The second task can be described as none other than a bank robbery, with Messing being required to withdraw 100,000 rubles from the state bank. He did as was asked, presenting the cashier with a blank piece of paper. The cashier then willingly handed the money over. Apparently. Alright, like, I gotta say that for everything. Just how many of these antidotes are true remains to be believed, basically, but it is understood that Stalin and Messing did meet on several occasions. Did that lead to Messing becoming Stalin's personal magician? Unlikely, to be honest. The leader had no need for a court wizard, and even if curiosity has led him to keep messing around, Stalin's ever-growing paranoia surely would have prevented him from being friends with, basically, this mind raider, you know what I mean? Because if you know anything about Joseph Stalin, dude, he was, he was very heavy on having friends and then not having those friends around for very long, you know what I mean? You make him mad and you were basically done, you were out of there. Now, there are conflicting accounts about Messing's activity during World War II. Some say he continued thrilling audiences in theaters across the USSR, while others say that he was sent to a notorious prison in Uzbekistan. Who knows? Either way, his later life was a sad, lonely one after the passing of his wife in 1960. Messing apparently died on November 1974, and of course, there's a legend declaring that he predicted his own death. Uh, the truth about Wolf Messing, though, will never be known, to be honest, leaving the exact nature of his extraordinary capabilities and remarkable achievements as unquantifiable mysteries. Me, I'm calling total BS on this. Like, I don't know if if people were just dumber back then or if half these stories are literally just made up at the end of the day like there is conflicting accounts of everything with this guy um dude i don't know bro like just the fact that you were like pulling jedi mind tricks and you like snuck into this guy's base like bro it's a little too unbelievable for me but i love the mystery so i'm hoping that this is real um in my mind though it's kind of just a little too far-fetched but we're moving on to the next person Benjamin Kyle. Benjamin Kyle was an alias chosen by an American man who had severe amnesia. On August 31st, 2004, Kyle was discovered outside of Burger King in Richmond Hill, Georgia by an employee. He had been beaten and was covered in red ant bites and sunburn. He was also discovered naked and unconscious. After his discovery, Kyle was taken to a hospital. However, he did not remember where he came from or his name, and he carried no identification. I'm just assuming this guy was robbed before this because like if you got no identification and then whatever happened if you were beaten and you, you know what i mean you suffer some brain damage dude like this is this is what could happen at the end of the day he eventually adopted the name benjamin kyle as he believed benjamin was his first name and kyle came from a placeholder name that was given to him so he thought his original name was benjamin and then he just figured uh oh, kyle since i don't remember my last name you know what i mean so benjamin kyle that's how he got the name Doctors determined that Kyle suffered from disassociative amnesia and had a period of 20 years that were missing. This guy forgot his whole life, bro. Like, that's fucked up, dude. Kyle stated that he believed that he came from Indiana or Colorado and had some familiarity with the cities of Indianapolis and Boulder. He particularly had memories of the University of Colorado library, although it was never confirmed if he was ever a student there. 
Kyle also have extensive knowledge of restaurant management and food preparation, suggesting that he might have worked in the industry prior to his amnesia. So, dude, this guy is like just somewhat, you know what I mean? He's got like a few things, like he's got good skills in the restaurant, which people are just kind of like using to say, oh, maybe he works in the industry. And then he has these random memories of just Boulder, Colorado. And you know what I mean? Like, it's just weird, bro. Like, I don't, I could never imagine that. That would be terrifying, not knowing anything about your life at that point, 20 years worth of your life, forgetting like, some days I forget yesterday, but dude, I remember like when I was five, like it was nothing, you know what I mean? Let me know if you guys can relate to that actually. He was unable to recall his social security information. Kyle remained homeless and unemployed for many years after his discovery. There were numerous efforts to identify Kyle, including fingerprint searches, media appeals, and missing person reports, basically. He was, they were trying everything, but they all ended up coming up empty. Kyle's DNA was eventually submitted into genealogy databases, and he was linked to a distant relative with a surname, Powell. It was established that this lineage had family members living in the Pacific Northwest in the early 1900s. So, dude, they couldn't even really figure out where he was from. They only know that one person, he was related to somebody named Powell, and that was in the early 1900s. So that's kind of as close as they could find to him. Colleen Fitzpatrick was involved in his case until he cut off communications with her. Kyle announced on his Facebook page in September of 2015 that he had been identified but at the time asked for his name to be withheld. This identification was led by C.C. Moore who developed the family tree in November of 2016 though. His true identity was revealed and he ended up being William Burgess Powell. That's his actual name. They actually figured out who he was, what his real name was. Not sure is still what he did with the rest of the missing 20 years. Like I'm sure that's just like a lot dude at the end of the day you know what i mean that's whole 20 years worth of memories that you gotta try to you know what i mean either regain or try to go back and just assimilate yourself so i hope that benjamin kyle's doing good i hope that william's doing all right you know what i mean next up is edward mordrake edward mordrake was a young intelligent and good-looking english nobleman as well as a musician of rare ability but with all his great blessings came a terrible curse. In addition to his handsome, normal face, Mordrake had a terrifying second face on the back of his head. The second face was said to be as lovely as a dream, hideous as a devil. That's what they all say, all right? I'm not sure what that really means, but we're going with it. This strange visage also possessed an intelligence of malignant sorts. So apparently he's like, you know what I mean? Kind of sadistic. Apparently, whenever Mordrake cried, the second face would smile and sneer. So imagine, dude, imagine you're just like having the worst day ever. You're over here, you know what I mean? You're like bawling your eyes out, and all you hear is some dude on the back of your head laughing, like snickering, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> giving that little stupid little smirk, like, bro, I don't know, I, I wouldn't deal with that all day. Mordrake was constantly plagued by his devil twin, which kept him all night whispering such things they only speak of in hell, according to him. The young nobleman was eventually driven mad and took his own life at the age of 23, leaving behind a note that ordered the de uh, that the evil face basically should be destroyed after his death. He says, lest it continues his dreadful whispering in my grave. Basically, he didn't want to deal with this guy even after he was gone. He was like, yo, on the off chance that this guy's going to be talking shit while I'm sitting in my grave, I do not want that. Get rid of him, burn him, destroy him. I don't care. Get rid of him. Now, this story of the man with two faces spread like wildfire across America. The public clamored for more details about Mordrake, and even medical professionals approached the story without a hint of skepticism. Basically, these medical professionals just heard the story and they were like, dude, we gotta see this, and they basically weren't even really that skeptical. They were like, yo, if this is real, we gotta see this. Now, they were trying to see this ASAP. In 1896, American doctors George M. Gould and Walter L. Powell included the Mordrake story in their Book of Anomalies and Curiosities of Medicine, which was a collection of peculiar medical cases. Although Gould and Powell were legitimate ophthalmologists with successful medical practices, they were also quite gullible in the least, basically, at least in this case, they were super gullible, all right? Because as it turns out, the story of Edric Mordrake was fake. As Alex Bosey's blog, Museum of Hoaxes, diligently deduced, the author of the original Post article, Charles Lowden Hildreth, was a poet and science fiction writer. His stories tended to lean toward the fantastical and otherworldly as opposed to articles based in reality. Basically, this dude was just a science fiction writer and apparently nobody really fact checked this dude, alright? Of course, just because someone usually writes fiction doesn't mean that every single thing that they write is fiction. Still, there are many clues that suggest that the Mordrake story is completely made up, alright? And to be honest, come on, 
let's be real a guy with two faces i feel like that would be everywhere but for one hildreth's article cites the royal scientific study as its source for numerous bizarre medical cases but an organization by that name didn't even exist in the 19th century all right so they have the timeline completely messed up the royal society of london was a centuries old scientific institution but there was no organization that was both royal and scientific by the name in the western world at that time secondly hildreth's article appeared to be the first time of any medical cases he described that have ever appeared in any literature scientific or otherwise the royal society of london's entire database is uh searchable online basically you can still go up and like look at it right now and bozies wasn't able to find a single one of hildreth's anomaly in its archives so basically this guy figured out that this dude hildreth just made up edric mordrake and apparently these two doctors um basically they just put this dude in their book of scientific other medical oddities all right and nobody really fact checked them because apparently they were just super gullible um i don't know i feel like for medical professionals that is just like kind of not doing your job that well like dude aren't you supposed to like look into this a little bit and not just be like dude no way bro that's like a joe rogan moment yo guy with two faces we're putting that in the book right now I don't know that's how i see it but moving on to the last one this is going to be a short one though i promise all right and finishing off this part of the most mysterious people that ever exist is king kolasai all right king kolkasai king kolasai is arguably one of the most mysterious figures in all of history there's actually very little research on him except that he was named by multiple ancient historians what is known is that between the 8th and 7th bc he united all the scythian tribes to form an empire known as the kolasai dynasty now, unfortunately, since the Scythians actually had no way of writing, they had no formal writing system or anything, there's nothing really known about this, and it seems to have vanished by the century BCs. Like, basically, the next century, there was nothing about this guy. And since there was no writing system back then, and they really had no way of keeping track of what was going down at the time, it's still mysterious to us. And this is kind of like one of those things that's just lost to history. I couldn't really find any more information on this guy so if you're able to please let me know down below in the comments and other than that let me know if there's any other mysterious historical people or just even mysterious people in general that you'd like for me to explain break down whatever um i do have a few more that i could do just different parts of this um that i do plan on doing to be honest but if there's anybody that you know you want to see let me know down below and other than that appreciate you uh, make sure you guys leave a comment about your favorite part something you didn't know something you want to see doesn't really matter um and make sure you like subscribe all the youtube stuff all the stuff that they love to see and yeah stay safe stay dangerous get laid love you peace